Hello, Justin and Melanie are here to talk about the 2021 Texas 4-H Opportunity Scholarship. Uh, just a little more training specifically on the scholarship that you can turn in in February for the 4-H. So keep in mind, this not only talks about the baccalaureate scholarship, which a lot of people are familiar with, and that seems to be where we have the most applications, but it's also for courageous heart and technical scholarships, and we'll try to go through those as well as we go through this training today. So when you're preparing for college, quick review, we want you to prepare, uh, starting to prepare when you're a freshman, not just right when you're in your senior year. So you want to start looking at career goals and what you're going to need in your degree uh, coming up rather than um, things that you're interested in now rather than just right, into, uh, right when you're going into college. So different things you need to look into, visiting colleges, talking to people, learning what the admission process is, learning about financial aid, everything like that. And then, of course, applications must be submitted through the Texas 4-H Foundation uh, Scholarship Portal, which here's the link, uh, that texas4h.org. You'll go to there, what to do, how to do, and give you some uh, hands-on tutorials through there as well. may have the same set of slides you see here, but something that kind of keeps you up with it. Also, again, uh, we talk about baccalaureate technical courageous heart. So your application is fully online. You can download the list of questions, but all of your answers have to be in their system. Uh, you want to format the samples for each given type of question. You want it to be clear, <laughs> concise. Um, there are additional instructions at the website with the Texas 4-H Foundation. Um, things like that, all good things to have online. And of course, what are some of your resources that you need? We've always been a big believer in pushing those record books. I know they're not always the funnest thing to do, but they help you keep a more accurate record of what's going on. If not, maybe you've kept a good calendar, or you've kept it on a written calendar, maybe a digital calendar, whatever, something that you've actually kept up with the years through there. Uh, you know, you need to, of course, fill out the scholarship online official high school transcript, and it may go into this later, but it has to be filled out by the principal or counselor there, and it must be based on a 100-point scale, not a 4.0 scale, not 105, so if, if it's a weighted scale, it needs to be back down on that 100-point scale. Keep that in mind. ACT, SAT test scores, you may have taken them, but they're not required this year. Uh, we applaud you for doing that, but for this year, they're going to pass on that. And of course, the FAFSA that gives you your student aid report, that is a must to get that. If you haven't done it, you do it now. So basically, here's the a scholarship process. You have what the 4-H member has to do. You have to fill out the application. You have to get everything verified. You have to judge. There'll be, there'll be some judging for the application. Um, and then you'll get notified for the interview process. You enter, the 4-H member interviews. And then there's a scholar selection. Then there will be a scholarship banquet and presentation. Uh, the donors verify financial support. Uh, the member submits contracts or thank you notes, etc. And then the scholarship is paid to the college or university. This doesn't go directly to an individual. Okay, in the scoring system, you can see through there, and we won't go too technical into that. I know in years past, in the financial need, it weighed heavier and your GPA weighed heavier. This year they've actually looked like they bumped up the scoring a little bit for your baccalaureate. But you can kind of see in there as you go through there where those weighted areas are. So you're, again, your 4-H experience and narratives are very important in your baccalaureate and technical scholarship. Your courageous heart, not so much, but your courageous heart goes into some other issues, some other things that we can cover later on that as well. But just keep in mind whichever area you're going into, see how those uh, averages are weighted in there. So it's really important to use an email for your scholarship that you are going to be able to always receive communication with. Do not use a school email that you will not have access to after you graduate. Um, additionally, this should be the applicant's information, not a parent or guardian's information. 
So make sure that it is for the applicant for the child. And so the scholarship application, which opened on November 2nd and deadline to apply is February 15th. But let me tell you, the sooner you get some of these copies into the portal and you want to print them off and share with Melanie and I or whoever you trust, that's great because we can help you get there. But again, you have to go to that uh, foundation uh, scholarship portal to get into where you need to be. But do not wait till February 1st because you will be behind on this scholarship. It is a multi-page scholarship and you're going to have to work on section by section and it will take some time. And so we're going to go over some of the sections, but this is what the portal looks like. Um, you'll want to create a new account, use an email that the applicant can use even after they graduate. Um, create a password, basic instructions, um, then you're going to want to apply. Once you can get in, you have to apply for one of them, whether it's a baccalaureate, a technical, or a courageous heart. You cannot apply for all of them. Yeah, you can only apply for one or the other, so you have to look at those. And again, the courageous heart is more directed towards students that have learning disabilities possibly had a family issue that came along that may weigh heavy on that family's decision where that kid can go to college or not. And then the technical scholarships are for those kiddos that are wanting to go to like uh, TSTC in Waco or something. They want to do welding or mechanics or something like that. They can uh, apply for those as well. So we're going to go a little bit through each scholarship so that you know what you're looking at. Um, that being said, that way you can pick out the, the best one for you. So the baccalaureate scholarship, there's some basics that you can see there. Um, you want to be able to make sure all of your hard <laughs> copies convert to digital. So um, if you are needing to fax something into uh, the program so that it is fit, it selects it into a digital PDF copy, there are some tools that um, you're able to use, but make sure that they're connecting with the system. And again, the collaborate tool there you see is again part of the application process. Uh, allows you to invite anyone using their, uh, using their email to view and edit your application. So again, we're Melanie or I or anybody else that you want them to look at, you can sure let, let them look at it as well. So section one, personal information. They're going to need your personal information. Uh, unique identifier. This is your personal ID, preferred name, your... Phonetic name. Your phonetic name. So if your name is Sarah, you have to spell it out with the... Uh, how, how you would spell it out if you were trying to read it in the dictionary. Yeah. And sometimes you can Google some of those. Sometimes they'll have that available for you too as well. But this is just a standard process, personal information stuff it, as we go through it. It's not too much, but just to have this on, on your mind as you're starting. This is probably, the, be honest with you, is the easiest part of the scholarship application. Yeah. So demographics, they do want uh, basic demographics. Where are you from? Who you are? Things like that. Uh, your district, your county. And we are District 3, by the way, if you ever wonder that. We are District 3. And Montague County. And Montague County, yeah. That's, um, your agent's, agent's name, it could be Justin or uh, Melanie. It doesn't matter which one you put in there. Just stick with one or the other. College and university information. This is hopefully, some, hopefully goes back to you visited a few of these colleges. Maybe you've already applied for some of them. You've already heard back or you're waiting to hear back. That's fine either way. But be sure to uh, put this in there as your first choice, second choice, and what your majors are going to be, uh, that kind of stuff, because it sure helps uh, when you're filling out these applications, what you're looking at. They don't base it on what schools you're going to by any means. They don't care if you're going to A&M, to University of Texas, El Paso, wherever. They just want to make sure you've already been in contact with them. The next section, section three, livestock, livestock show participation. This is specific for if you are applying for those scholarships. Um, 
And, and some of these will be like if you showed it Fort Worth, you'll roll it, roll up the ladder a little bit, or San Antonio, you'll roll up the ladder for those as well. And that San Antonio tour guide is if you helped uh, do the the uh, grade tours down there while they were there, and I doubt they have it this year, but you know if you happen to have done it before, then you have that opportunity. So your individual scholastic record. Um, this is what is your expected date of graduation and a high school transcript. You can upload it once you've received it from your counselor. And make sure, again, that is on a 100-point scale, not a 4.0 scale, a 100-point scale, and not a weighted scale. So if you have 105, you need to make sure that they understand that that needs to be unweighted, so it might be a 98 or something like that. But you need to make sure that that is taken care of by your counselor or principal. Yes. So section five is your ranking and GPA verification. So you have to verify with your counselor or school through their, they, we need an email address for them. So you have to, for this section to be completed, the school has to um, get the information into, into the system. So there's an example of a basic email for you to see, and then you attach that email to that, to that administrator's email address. It has to be completed. It has to, they have to verify that you actually are going to school where you say you're going to school. Right. And of course, some other basic questions, you know, high school, if you're public, private, homeschool, it doesn't matter. Just be sure to put that in there. What ranking that you are in your class. Uh, high school GPA, again, a 100 point scale, not a 4.0, not a weighted scale. And I know I'll go through that because if you get this part wrong, they will kick it out. Uh, again, you need to put in there, you know, who your administrators are. Uh, phone numbers, email address, that kind of stuff, and to certify the, all that information. Well, and this is what the administrator is going to receive. Right. And they will uh, complete it and send it back. But they need to know it's on a 100-point scale. Yes. Um, you will be able to see if the administrator has completed the requested information or not. So if you have, um, if you keep on it, Make sure that you see that they've done it. After seven days, they will send a reminder email, but it is recommended that you go in and talk to them and say, please, fin please let them know uh, it's follow coming. this up. You know, let them know it's coming. Let them know that they need to do it. Um, section six is your uh, FAFSA. Yeah, so hopefully you filled out this FAFSA. It came out, you were able to start filling it out October 1. I know a lot of us have already filled it out uh, and got that application in and already see the results, but plan on a couple of two or three weeks for it to come back to you what your student aid report will be. Some may qualify, some may not qualify for financial aid, but that's fine. You have to do it both ways. It does not matter. It has to be completed and done. So again, this takes a little process. It takes part on part of the student to fill their part out and also for the parent to fill their part out to share the taxes, not your 2020 taxes, but your 2019 taxes. So you've already done those or the parents should have already done those. And those two will merge in that way you have that option to make those things merge in the end so you get your student aid. But it is, it, it FAFSA can be a daunting application, but you need to do it ASAP if you have not already. So, highly recommended. So, there is a part where you are going to say why you need financial aid, but you should not start it. I need financial aid, or I deserve financial aid because of X, Y, Z. Find a more creative way to explain a need for financial aid. Yeah. So, you know, let the judges decide, basically. Excuse me, oh dear, we skipped a space or two. So let the judges decide on what they read, and this is a report that when you fill this narrative out, it's going to take some time to fill it out and rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it, have people reread it, reread it, and in that way we go through it 
and we can understand what's going on. And that's where Melanie and I can sure step up and help you with some of that. And have more than one person read it so you get a different <coughs> perspective. Um, these are parts where we're wanting you to do as much as you can. Keep in mind there is a character count. You're not allowed to go over, over uh, 3,500 characters. That includes um, spaces. Spaces and periods. <clears throat> so make sure that it's fitting into that um, that character count. But l have people read what you write. Right. And, and I suggest doing it on a Word program or something like that, typing it in and sharing it with somebody and rereading and rewriting rather than going in here and rereading and rewriting. And then you can copy and paste that thing in here. should be easier for you. Your project experiences here, same kind of thing. Be very good about what you've done, how you've done it, the years, the leadership, uh, local, county, district. All this stuff matters. And in fact, we have some examples of these. If you get to that point and you want to see some examples, we're glad to share with some of these that we have had in the past with the ones, the parents that have agreed to let us share those with you. We may not tell you the kid's name, but at least you can kind of get an understanding of what some of these look like. This also has a character count. So keep that in mind, but you want to pick your big things that you really feel like show off you. Um, your leadership experience, the same idea. You're wanting to put in when you were a leader, what was this county, state, district? Um, was it, were you elected, were you appointed? What made this a leadership opportunity for you? Um, character count is also important. Yeah, honors, your honors section here, citizenship, community. This, again, can kind of be like a listing of what you've done. I know, again, your character counted for sure. But, you know, list in there everything that you've got at, at Gold Stars, First Place Pig, whatever you're proud of, list it all. And this is where your record book really comes into process on this part because you should have all that throughout the years. And so you need to list those. And you can list up to four your most important honors in 4-H, but again, list those things as you see are important to you. And why they're important. Yeah. Um, it's local, county, district, region, state, national, or international. So you have a wide selection of what you can um, put forward. Service, community service, I know it probably rankles people a little bit how often we say community add more community service, but this is why. You can add up to f at least 15 of your citizenship and community service activities, and you're wanting to pick a variety. Were you a, you performed it yourself? Were you a member of a group? Did you provide primary leadership? So did you lead out in the service project or were what was it you were just a member to be part of the service project? Your outside 4-H experience, is this anything you did with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, church. FFA, church? You know, you can go in there and list what you've done. You know, here they kind of gave you an example. They were a sound projector technician at the, at the Cowboy Church there, and that's great. You know, anything that you have outside, that is great information to put in there and share with everybody so they can kind of see it as well. Uh, again, this is outside of 4-H, so it includes school, church, other youth groups, etc. as far as that goes. Um, final part is a personal narrative. You have to write about yourself. Give some highlights of what makes you different from everybody else. There is a character count, so this is the time where you talk about anything else about you. So you don't need to reiterate what you've already said in your 4-H, in your church, uh, outside of 4-H. This is adding some stuff about family. This is adding um, things about something you love, why you're choosing the career you want to go into. But you're want, this is not the time to once again say why you need it. This is a time to talk about who you are without using your name. Right, right. And again, write, write, rewrite, share with us. We'll help you with this. If you need examples, let us know. Career narrative, again, this is kind of talking about who, what, why you want to be the person you want to be, the colleges you went to, job careers you've looked at, 
persons that may have influenced you one way or the other? Uh, you know, how did you decide to get there? Associates, technical, whichever way you're going, we want to know how you're wanting to get there and describe all this information about your career, basically, or what you're wanting to pursue. And that does not mean they're going to hold you to that career. When you go to school, you may realize, hey, I wanted to be a vet. <clears throat> you got in some of those classes and wasn't quite what you thought it was going to be, and now you switched over to be a teacher. That's fine. That's not a problem. Um, the final part is acknowledgement of integrity. Cannot stress this enough. This is very important that you hold to this. They will find out if you forge something. Forge something. something. And we have to check off too for you as well. So, you know, I mean, we can't always verify that you went to 29 meetings and you helped 40 people during the tornado. We can't verify that part of it. But that's up to y'all, and we will verify. We know you are a kid in 4-H, and that we've had you in 4-H, and we, we approve of the scholarship application. Okay, so that is mostly the baccalaureate, and tech to an extent. The Courageous Heart applicants have a little bit more because you have the opportunity to explain what makes you a Courageous Heart. Um, they will ask for references, so you have to find three adults that are not family members, that are not related to you. Um, you also get an opportunity to say what obstacle or special need you have been dealing with. And we've had a few of these in the past. A lot of them have been uh, issues with dyslexia and something like that. And, and as long as you write it and you have the references to push through, uh, you'd be surprised what they uh, can do. And this scholarship's worth, I believe, $5,000. So it's a good scholarship to have for those kiddos that may have some other obstacles in their way that typically most students may not face. This is, you know, this could be a, a dip, uh, disability. It could be medical. It could be the death of a family member. It could be a large uh, financial burden on your family, things like that. Um, but the references are here. You'll provide the information, phone number, email, so I can get a hold of them, and then letter of recommendation, so on and so forth. So they have to write a letter of recommendation. So if you want to go for Courageous Heart, I would suggest asking someone now yep. to write a letter of reference. So quick review. Agents have to review. Applicants should review this frequently. Um, before you can turn it in, we have to sign off on it. So we will have to review what you said. Some quick, important dates. The app, um, we've done some scholarship trainings. There are others coming up throughout the district and state. The application opened on November 2nd, so it is open. The deadline is February 15th. You'll be notified if you um, are going to be interviewed on April 4th. That's the tentative date. Um, they're looking at interviews April 23rd through the 25th. They'll let people know by May 5th. That's tentative. The idea being that you'll be awarded your, your scholarship sometime during Texas 4-H Roundup, which was June 7th through the 10th. And here we go, the tips, and we've kind of reiterated this over and over through it, but I mean, if you haven't done the FAFSA, get it done now. Uh, brainstorm any ideas that you may have. Get on your record books, pull that stuff up. You should have most of that stuff electronically probably. Be sure to read and follow those directions uh, correctly. And then again, ask for help to review, critique, whatever, you know, whether it's us, an English teacher, whatever you want to do. Let us repeat and go through there and help you out with some of those reviews. Uh, complete all the sections. So if you don't complete them all, you don't get a score on them. And so you need to make sure what you have in there is definitely submitted. And then quality more than quantity. Well, you know, we, they did a character count, uh, you know, 4,000 or 3,500 or whatever. They want to read more about quality of you and your experiences than they want to worry about if you hit 4,000 characters. So this is competitive academic scholar, scholarship process. This is a competitive ag, uh, part. So the application must be completed against a, will be, bleh. You're going to compete across, with people across the state. 
So applicants change each year just because something worked a year or two ago. It does not mean it will work this year. And the judges change every year. I know when I judged this a few years ago, we had six minutes to read a application. And so that wasn't long. So it had to hit us pretty hard what you put in there. And so that's the thing you have to remember. These judges typically have six minutes to review these uh, each one of these uh, applications. Again, no quotas set for counties, districts, or regions. Uh, Fort Worth Stock Show is the only livestock show that requires participation in their show, so San Antonio and Houston doesn't require it. But they do require certain other criteria you need to be familiar with as well. Donors set the criteria, so however much they want to get or what they want to look for, that's up to them. And make sure uh, your high school academic proficiency has been met and college interest exams taken early and often although we don't have to take your ACTs or ACTs to apply anymore. So each applicant receives a total score, and those scores are sorted highest to lowest, and then they're matched with the maximum dollar scholarship for which that applicant qualifies. Scholarships are, are Some scholarships are restricted to a major or a college or course of study. Those are verified each semester during the duration of the scholarship. Don't lie to get a scholarship. It will catch up with you. They will look in on it. Again, things to remember, narratives have only been written once or rarely effective, and that we can attest to that. Printer problems happen and will happen. Computer crashes, you know, that's just what happens no matter what. So keep a backup to your backup to your backup, basically, and keep information. So type it over in Word, paste it over into your application, whatever you want to do. High school counselors are going to need the time to collect this official information. You know, it's Christmas break now. Usually at Christmas break for seniors, especially they're tallying up the numbers, seeing who's going to be valedictorian, salutatorian. So they're working on these right now. But you need to let them know what to expect from you. Big thing to remember, start now, if you haven't started already, and edit it often. Look at it a lot. Have other people look at it. Keep going with this. Um, finding a scholarship, finding scholarships right now can be a full-time job. And so, believe me, when once you go through this 4-H application scholarship, you can use a lot of this same material on all these other scholarships you're going to fill out because all the information that you're going to put into this one, I mean, is, is nothing compared to some of your other smaller scholarships that you'll be looking at. But apply for everything that you can. So last few things to ask yourself. Do you meet the basic criteria or requirements? Is the application complete? And that's again up to you to make sure it has, is complete to the best of your knowledge. Has the full story been told? Spelling and grammar. I would have never thought this when I was going through high school, but now I'm a big stickler on spelling and grammar because we've got to understand just because somebody wrote to a T-O or did we mean to to include also? You know, things like that catch your uh, eye pretty quick as a judge. Mm -hmm. Has your FAFSA SAR individual report, is it there? Have you done it? Are your transcripts and your scores as requested there? Are your narratives well written and detailed and edited very well? That's very, very important. And make sure the submission category has been identified as well. So when you apply, make sure you know what you're applying for. Now, thank you for joining us. We hope this helps a little bit as you go about completing the 4-H scholarship. If you have any questions, contact um, Justin or Melanie at the Extension Office. We are happy to help. We want to help anybody who is trying for this scholarship get the best scholarship they can. And we would like to know who is applying for the scholarships as well so it doesn't catch, catch us off guard. We had one apply last year that we did not know about until the state contacted us on it. So that hurt them a little bit. But the sooner you let us know that you're applying, the better off we're going to be. And again, if you need some copies of some of these examples of some of this stuff, we can sure get it to you. Just let us know. Anyway, have a good day. Enjoy your holidays. And we will... Talk again soon.